Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video here on the channel. Once again, a sporadic appearance from me to talk about the Champions League 2023-24 semi-finals preview here. It is an important occasion awaits us this week on Tuesday and on Wednesday. And let's start by talking about the game that potentially has the lesser interest between the two games, but it's a shame to call it so because it's a Champions League semi-final regardless and people will be tuning in to watch it. It's Borussia Dortmund versus PSG, two teams that I think on different pathways um, to the semi-finals and different pathways in their season altogether. PSG wrapped up things in France, they won the league already, they're pretty much close to doing so. Uh, Borussia Dortmund, they've been shambles in the Bundesliga this season, not on the level that people anticipate, although they had some decent results along the way, uh, beating Bayern and their Classic and stuff like that, but obviously the Champions League is both sides top form it seems this season, I mean PSG I think since the loss against Newcastle 4-1, they've been a pretty different team. They managed to end the group stage in style, they qualified, and then they managed to get through in the um, in the round of, uh, of 16. They managed to get through Real Sociedad, it wasn't that hard of a job really, but also they managed to beat Barcelona 4-1 at the, at the uh, Montoya, their own stadium, uh, Barcelona Stadium, to qualify to the semi-final. Borussia Dortmund, on the other hand, they also had a pretty easy job against PSV in the round of 16, and then a hell of a remontada against Atletico Madrid 4-2 at the Signal Iduna Park to qualify to the semi-final. As I said, Borussia Dortmund definitely bad in the Bundesliga, no doubts about it. PSG wrapped up the business in France, they don't have anything to worry about. This is where it comes down to, this is where it boils to for both these sides, Borussia Dortmund in particular, I think. I'm not going to say that they need to save their season by winning the Champions League, but I think Getting into the final in the first place, at least for now, is going to be a very good step forwards to prove that they still have uh, a chance of really having an unbelievable end to the season. Uh, their form of the Champions League has been really fantastic. Again, it's a dichotomic situation to what they have in the Bundesliga, where they just get lost against Leipzig 4-1 in the Signal Iduna Park, and it was a really you know, bad drubbing um, at the hand of the Rosenborn side. PSG, on the other hand, um, they pretty comfortable, they seem, and the victory against Barcelona really boosted, I think, their momentum uh, heading into this semi-final. Uh, I think this is an unexpected semi-final in a way. Not a lot of people thought we're going to see PSG versus Dortmund, probably the most sort of pure um, football fans expected an, a, a Spanish semi-final, Atletico Madrid versus Barcelona, or at least expected one of those two to get to the semi-finals. In the end, we got none of them, it's Borussia Dortmund versus PSG. They meet again, it's not the same meeting as in the group stage, not the same circumstances, certainly not the same form. Uh, probably we're going to expect uh, an improvement from PSG uh, over those games in the group stages, particularly the game in, in Germany wasn't that great, but they still managed to nick out a draw there. Borussia Dortmund certainly gained momentum, gained confidence as they grew in the competition. The final is in Wembley, so they're going to be looking to repeat the memory of 2013 and maybe even go on better than 2013, which is win the whole competition. Certainly a game, as I said, with different circumstances. Borussia Dortmund and PSG are fit, ready, they have the squad ready. Um, it's going to be played on really little details, particularly the first game in Signal Iduna Park. The crowd, the, the atmosphere that the Borussia Dortmund fans will create how that is going to be planned, can Dortmund strike, can they stop PSG's danger from Barcola, like some Mbappe as well, Dembele, having a really good form despite not scoring a lot, but coming clutch against Barcelona in the first leg and in the second leg. Big game away to the signal in the park. Um, as far as predictions concerned, I don't think I can do it justice, I think it's 50-50 regardless. Uh, again, the form of these two sides have been sort of contrasting in their leagues, but in the Champions League, as I said, both sides seem to find momentum, they seem to find their confidence as they grow into the competition, and particularly PSG, I think, surprised me with the way they've been playing this season. They've been more collective than usual, they've been more focused than usual, and I think less flamboyant, less flair-ish than usual. And if they can be as effective as they were against Barcelona, I think they could finish the job against Dortmund from the start uh, uh, and, and from the first leg. But obviously, Borussia Dortmund are no slouches themselves. They can give a good game when they want to. Uh, we saw them beat Newcastle home and away, which is not an easy task considering how people expected Newcastle to go through from that group, uh, the group of death in the, um, the group stages and the early goings of the Champions League. Definitely a game to watch, despite people having less interest in it theoretically, compared to the other uh, semi-final in this tournament, but definitely a game that you can be excited about 
and definitely a game that will provide us a lot of good football. So is the second game um, of the semi-finals, of course, what we're going to get to talk about in a moment. My predictions, I think, for PSG versus Borussia Dortmund. I would say this is a bold statement, but I think maybe Borussia Dortmund will go through um, to the finals. The other game, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich actually hosting Real Madrid in the Allianz Arena and it's a tough one to predict, a tough one to, uh, to, to analyse, a tough one to look at, a tough one to read, even with, I would say, a lot of Real Madrid fans expecting it to be a walk in the park for some reason, uh, expecting it to be easy for them to just go and be Bayern in the Allianz Arena and I don't blame them. The recent history between the two sides, six victories for Real Madrid, only one victory for Bayern Munich and two draws in the last um, in the last nine games. It's really tough to look at it from any other perspective other than that. You know, it's one draw, as I said, one draw, six wins for Bayern, for Real Madrid, sorry, and one win for, for Bayern. Um, the record of Carlo Ancelotti against Bayern Munich, the record of Thomas Tuchel against Real Madrid, both are really good. Ancelotti never lost against Bayern as a coach. Thomas Tuchel only lost once to Real Madrid as a coach. It's going to be a clash of the titans, the biggest European football game ever. I think it's big Champions League football if you look at it. 26 times these two sides met. The record is pretty close, 12 victories for Real Madrid, 11 for Bayern Munich, 3 draws. Uh, Real Madrid scored 41, Bayern scored 39, pretty close on almost every regard. And these are the two teams with the top statistics actually in, in Europe. I'm not saying titles because everybody knows that Bayern are third uh, or joint third uh, most titles in the Champions League. Real Madrid are the kings of the competition with 14, Bayern are six uh, alongside Liverpool. But in terms of general statistics and consistency, I would say in the competition, Bayern Munich and Real Madrid are the two most consistent clubs in the top tier competition. Most finals, most semi-finals, most victories, most losses, most points in the group stages, most goals. I think these two have, you know, every right to be called the top dogs in the European football. The teams to beat, certainly Real Madrid, are the team to beat. Bayern Munich doesn't come far behind. It's going to be another classic of European football and it's going to be a tough one um, to watch as a neutral, as a fan. It's going to be unbelievably exciting and maybe stressful as well, particularly for the Bayern Munich fans who, um, including me, uh, as one of them, I think Bayern Munich entered this game as underdogs, but definitely uh, with the injuries that Bayern Munich have, the worries about a lot of players being fit or not being fit, you know, Sané still in doubt, Gnabry still in doubt, Musiala still in doubt. Kundrad um, you know, is Delict going to be there? You don't really know what lineup is going to be uh, present in the game. Real Madrid, on the other hand, they're in top form. They're pretty much going to wrap up La Liga very soon. Uh, they don't have to worry about injuries because they're recuperating their players. They're only, I think, still missing Courtois at this point, who hasn't returned yet, but I think he will be fine uh, probably by the second leg, maybe, to start rehabilitating and start getting back into the side. Um, overall, it's a tough game on both sides and definitely a hell of an encounter to, to watch. Um, but I think the Real Madrid fans should not think of it with the parameters of the 2014, 2017 and 2018 games because those are different encounters with different circumstances. I think this was an, is where Bayern Munich pretty much have everything on the line in this uh, situation. Their only hope is the Champions League to, serve, to salvage their season. Um, can Harry Kane win the biggest trophy possible as his first trophy? Um, nobody knows. Um, the first game in the Allianz Arena might be a disadvantage for Bayern Munich because they need to have the best result possible so they can ease the tension and ease the stress on themselves going into the Bernabeu for Real Madrid. It's the usual job. It's another day for the office. Um, in the office, it looks like for, Bayern, for, for Real Madrid. Definitely the toughest day in the office. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be a walk in the park. But it's definitely going to be um, a worthwhile watch, just like the City game, probably. Not as one-sided, but definitely is going to be as stressful and as tough uh, for them. Bayern Munich have all the eggs in the basket in the Champions League. And Tom Stuckel wants to win it. He wants to do it. He wants to salvage the season with the Champions League. And that will change the reputation about him on the way out of Bayern Munich. And maybe that will get him contacted by other clubs to, to have, um, you know, to secure the job. The Man United, we heard, they are interested in, um, in calling him. So the game, as I mentioned, it will be tough. 
Bayern Munich's injury list is still in doubt. Nobody knows who's going to be there, who's going to be present for the game on Tuesday. Real Madrid, as I said, top dogs. It's going to be one hell of a game at the Allianz Arena. And I think my prediction is pretty much based on pure emotion and pure uh, personal bias. I think Bayern Munich are going to win this one. Um, this is all for the predictions for the Champions League semi-finals. Give us yours in the comments below. And I hope I'll be there uh, on Thursday, hopefully, to talk about the first leg of the Champions League semi-final for both games to review them. And again, as I said, I'll be posting more, uh, you know, normally and more regularly on the channel. Like, share and subscribe, of course. Hopefully, we get to you pretty soon, as I said, on Thursday to review both games. Thank you and goodbye.